Hello and welcome to the Drexel interview. I'm your host Paula Morantz Cohen speaking to you from the Academy of Natural Sciences of Drexel University in Philadelphia. Today my guest is Jacob Bender, Executive Director of the Council on American Islamic Relations in Philadelphia. Jacob Bender is a Jew and the first non-Muslim to hold such a high-ranking position in this organization. Jacob Bender, welcome to the Drexel interview. Thank you, Paula. It's a very great pleasure to be here with you. Well, your role as a peacemaker and a bridge builder between peoples um, is quite unusual and controversial in many respects. And I'd like to get at the root of what you do by asking you a little bit about your upbringing and where you came from, what your parents were like, and how the values that you have were inculcated in you. I wonder if you could tell us a little about that. Sure, I'd be glad to. My parents were Eastern European Jewish immigrants who came over um, after World War I um, for my father and a little bit later for my mother. Um, Yiddish was their first language, their mother tongue, Mama Lushen, of the home. And like many immigrants, they experienced the work slavery of the sweatshop, which led them to participate in workers' movements and the socialist movement of the 1930s and 40s, which was exceedingly widespread and popular among Eastern European Jewish immigrants, in, primarily in New York, where they grew up uh, and were raised and reached adulthood. And so when they finally got married in the great baby boom after World War II um, and produced uh, two children, they distilled and inculcated within the family, particularly within my brother and myself, a sense of social justice based on their own experience in the labor movement, um, which led us to participate in ban the bomb demonstrations during the 1950s um, and in civil rights movement in the early 1960s as well. So these were the values of the immigrant society in which I grew up in, but also the Jewish um, society in which I was raised. Were they Zionists? No, they were in fact non or even anti-Zionist because this movement saw the place of Jews or the not only the place of Jews but the responsibility of Jews as one of creating social justice wherever they lived. So they felt and this movement felt that it was possible for Jews to create a just, peaceful society in the lands of their birth, and that it was unnecessary to, for all Jews to be able to live a Jewish life to move to the Jewish state uh, in Palestine. So they were lukewarm, if not antagonistic, towards Zionism, which said that the only place one could live a full Jewish life was in the Jewish homeland. The tensions between Jews and Arabs, between Israelis and Arabs, when did you become cognizant of this and a possible role that you might play in terms of what was going on in the Middle East? I think I became cognizant of this conflict exceedingly early in my life. My upbringing led me to a great interest in Jewish history, and in the contemporary heart of that history was the Arab-Israeli conflict. We did not refer to it in the 50s and 60s as the Israeli-Palestinian conflict yet, but that was sure uh, to come. And right after the 67 war, I took my first trip to Israel. Um, I fell in love with the place. It was immensely exciting. Um, I went back every summer to work on archaeological digs um, on Kibbutzim, um, studied Hebrew at an old pond. And after the Yom Kippur War of October 1973, I actually moved to Israel to, after finishing my BA at UCLA, to take a job at an amazing institution called Yad Vashem, which is the National Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem. And I stayed four years living in Israel before I returned to America to undertake a graduate program in film at NYU in New York, which has been my home ever since. So was there an evolution in your thinking? I know you say your parents came from a relatively not anti-Zionist but not pro-Zionist 
uh, uh, sentiment. When you lived in Israel, when you went to Israel, were you tilted in that direction? And then how, how did your uh, ideas evolve? I think during those early years that I was there, I was very excited and happy and thrilled to be there. But I also had a sense that all was not right in the Holy Land. I saw the treatment of Palestinians and Arabs, which reminded me of American racism as well. Um, and slowly the position um, became more pronounced. Slowly I became more critical. Slowly I began to learn about the Palestinian side of the conflict, the Arab side of the conflict, which seemed to hold for me as I read more more and more accurate picture of what I was seeing with my own eyes uh, on the ground. And many Israelis themselves, even those born in Israel, have come to the conclusion that over the last three and four and five decades of the continuing occupation of the Palestinian people, primarily in East Jerusalem and the West Bank, that Israel is on the course of national suicide. It has lost friends around the world and that is something that we as Jews feel, even though we don't live there, an obligation to speak up about. One, because of our desire to keep Israel secure and strong and democratic, but also because when somebody commits injustice in your own family against somebody else, it's your obligation, we feel, to stop that injustice. And when we of the Jewish peace movement, the Jewish left, those Jews who are critical of the state of Israel look at that country now, we look at it in a critical way, but still one of love. When Israelis speak to you about their feelings regarding their sense of being under siege, that the fact that there are terrorist attacks upon them that are unpredictable and continual, um, how do you respond to that? For many years, we heard the argument that the Arabs wanted to throw Israel into the sea, throw the Jews into the sea. And yet the historical record of the last four to five decades has been that the people who have been thrown out of their homes have not been the Israelis, but hundreds of thousands of Palestinians beginning in the 1948 war, where we know now through the work of Israeli historians, not Arab historians, that there was massive ethnic cleansing of Palestinians from their villages. 400 villages were destroyed by the um, armed forces of the nascent Israeli state in 1948 and 49. Um, in what the Palestinians referred to as the Nakba, a Arabic word that means catastrophe. Um, something that I did not know about um, when I went to Jewish school, something that was not taught. Um, and in fact, the refugees were um, referred to as people who had left voluntarily, where we know now because of the work of these great and courageous Israeli historians who went into the Israeli archives and found the story of these expulsions um, that gives a completely different take to the history. Um, of uh, Israel and Palestine. Um, I feel for the people of southern Israel when they are rocketed by Hamas. Nobody is in favor of terrorism. Our organization, Council on American Islamic Relations, has been over and over again issuing statements where we oppose terrorism committed against any civilian population, including the Israeli population. We issued a statement when the three Israeli teenagers were kidnapped. Um, but we see the root cause of the conflict as the occupation by Israel of another people. But the 